friends, welcome to the Grade 7 Mathematics Student Support Program. So in today's lesson, we are going to learn about the third part on statistics. Remember, in the first part, we learned about the tally and the construction of a frequency table. In the second part, we learn about how to construct and use pictograms. And in today's lesson, we are going to learn about how to construct and use bar charts, as well as how to interpret data in bar charts. So what is a bar chart? A bar chart is an alternative way of representing data graphically. It consists of rectangular bars of equal width and the length of the bars is proportional to the value that they represent. Equal spaces should be left between any two consecutive bars. So these are some important information regarding the construction of bar charts. Now, a bar chart can be what we call a horizontal bar chart or a vertical bar chart. This is because the bars can be represented either vertically or horizontally. So here, the bars are vertical, and this is a vertical bar chart, also known as a column bar chart. Here you can see the bars are drawn horizontally. So this is a horizontal bar chart, also known as a row bar chart. Let us consider an example. The frequency table shows the number of children who visited the zoo during the first four weeks of holidays. So we need to construct a bar chart based on this frequency table. So we have a look at the solution. This is our frequency table. So I'm going to have on my x-axis the different weeks, one, two, three, four. On the y-axis, we are going to have the number of children. Now, I need also to include a title. So the title here is number of children visiting the zoo. You can make use of a graph paper to construct your bar chart, or you can use your copybook. But remember, I should be leaving equal spaces between the rectangles, and all the rectangles should be of equal width. So here, for week one, I have 50 children. So I'm going to draw a rectangle up to 50. This is for week one. Week two, we have 65. So this should be the same width as in week one. Week three, we have 40 children visiting the zoo. And week four, we have 75 children visiting the zoo. Now, if I ask you from the bar chart to tell me in which week did more children visit the zoo? So you can look at the bar chart and you can see this is the one having the highest bar, the highest height. So in week four, we have the most number of children visiting the zoo. You also have some important points to remember when drawing a bar chart. The first one is the title of the chart. So you need to include a title when you're drawing your bar chart. An example can be amount of rainfall during the first five months of the year. Second one is you need to label your axes. So for example, for the first axis, you might have marks. And for the y-axis, you can have number of students. Next one is, you need to consider a suitable scale. So this will depend on the values of your frequency. If you have small values, you can use, let us say, 0, 1, 2, 3. But if you have larger values, then you can make use of, let us say, 0, 5, 10, 15, and so on. Remember, you need to draw bars of equal width. You should also leave equal spaces in between the bars. And the length of each bar 
represents its respective frequency. So now that we have learned how to construct a bar chart, we are going to move to the next part that is interpretation of bar chart. So we look at an example. The table below shows the favorite sport activity of each child in a particular school. So you've got, for example, badminton, 60 children, football, 125, volleyball, 100, swimming, 150, and basketball, 65. So we now move on to the next part. So you have to construct a bar chart to represent the data given in the table. Study carefully the bar chart and answer the following questions. Which is the most favorite sport activity? Which sport activity is least preferred by the children? How many more children prefer swimming to basketball? What percentage of children prefer football? And what is the ratio of children who prefer badminton to volleyball? Okay, let us have a look at the solution. So here is the frequency table. So I need to include the title of the chart, which is number of children favoring each sport activity. On the x-axis, I'll be having the different sports activities, so sport activity. On the y-axis, number of children. So if you look at the frequency column here, you've got quite large values. So that's why I have taken a scale of 20. 0, 20, 40, 60, and so on. So I'm going to have rectangles of equal width and the space between the bars should be equal. So for badminton, we have 60. Football, 125. So it's slightly higher than 120. Volleyball, 100. Swimming, 150. So it's between 140 and 160. And for basketball, 65 that is slightly higher than 60. So here is our bar chart. Now for part B, which is the most favorite sport activity? So if you look at the bar chart, you can see that swimming has the highest bar. So the, favorite, the most favorite activity will be swimming. Part C, which sport is least preferred by the children? So from the bar chart, the rectangle having the smallest height is badminton. So badminton is the least preferred sport activity. Part D, how many more children prefer swimming to basketball? So from the bar chart, we have 150 students who like swimming, 65 who like basketball. How many more prefer swimming to basketball? So it's going to be 150 minus 65. That is, we have 85 children who prefer swimming to basketball. But E, what percentage of children prefer football? So football, we have 125 children. Percentage now, I need to find the total number of children. So I need to add all the different frequencies and this gives me 500. To find the percentage, it's going to be 125 over 500 times 100%, which is equal to 25%. So 25% of children prefer football. But F, what is the ratio of children who prefer badminton to volleyball. So from the bar chart, we have 60 children who like badminton, 100 who like volleyball. So now remember ratio should be expressed in its simplest form. So I cancel the zero, six is to 10, and I divide by two to get three is to five. 
Next example, the frequency table below shows the favorite cakes of a grade 7 class. So you've got the different cakes and the number of students. That is my frequency table is here. And I've got the different questions. Construct a pictogram using an appropriate key. Construct a bar chart using an appropriate scale. Which is the most favorite cake of the students? How many more students prefer samosa as compared to burfi? Express the number of students who prefer putu as a percentage of the number of students in this grade 7 class. So we have a look at the solution. So here is our frequency table. Now for a pictogram, remember we need to include a title which is favorite cakes of a grade 7 class. So here I'm going to have a different cakes and here I'm going to have a number of students. So if you remember, we were asked to construct a pictogram using an appropriate key. So here, if you look at the values, we can see that we have small values. So I'm going to use a key. Here it is a smiley, which will represent two students. Now, for Samusa, we have 10 students. So the key is representing 2. So 10 divided by 2, 5. This means that I'm going to have 5 smileys. Napolitan, you have 8. 8 divided by 2, that is 4. I'm going to have 4 smileys. Similarly, for Jalebi, 6 divided by 2, 3. So I'm going to have 3. Now, for Gato Pimo. I have 7. So if I divide, I'm going to have 7 divided by 2, 3.5. So I'm going to have 3 full smileys and half of it to represent 7 students. Similarly for Putu, 5 students. So 5 divided by 2, 2.5. I'm going to have 2 full smileys and half of it. And for the last one, Burfi, 4 divided by 2, which is 2, so I'm going to have 2 smileys. So here is the pictogram. Now for part B. I need to construct a bar chart. So on the x-axis, I'm going to have a cakes. Y-axis will be number of students. And I have used a scale of 2, that is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. The title is, again, Favorite Cakes of a Grade 7 Class. So for Samusa, I'm going to have 10. So I'm going to have a rectangle of height 10. Napolitan 8, and so on. Now, let us have a look at Gato Pimo, which is 7. So 7 is between 6 and 8. I'm going to have the bar here, the horizontal bar, midway between 6 and 8. Same for Putu, midway between 4 and 6 to represent 5. Don't forget, the width of the rectangles should be equal and also the distance, the length between the bars should be equal. Now we move on to part C. Which is the most favorite cake of the students? We can make use of our pictogram, bar chart or even the frequency table to answer this question. So from the frequency table we can see that the largest value is 10, so samosa is the favorite cake of the students. Next one, how many more students prefer samosa as compared to burfi? So we have 10 students who prefer samosa and 4 who prefer burfi. So the difference is 10 minus 4, that is 6. More students who prefer samosa to burfi. Next. Express the number of students who prefer Putu as a percentage of the number of students in this grade 7 class. So we have 5 students who prefer Putu and the total number of students in this class will be 10 plus 8 plus 6 plus 7 plus 5 plus 4, that is 40. So the percentage now will be 5 over 40 times 100%, that is 12.5% of the class who prefer Putu. 
We can also make use of the Excel software to draw the bar charts. For example, you can type in your data here on an Excel sheet. You then select the required rows and columns. Then you go on Insert at the top and you select the chart that you want to construct. For example, here I have chosen to construct the bar chart. Also, you can make use of GeoGebra to draw the charts. So you have a link here to explain to you, this is a YouTube video, which will explain to you how to draw a bar chart using the software GeoGebra. We now move on to some exercises for you to practice. So you've got different types of questions based on what has been covered in this lesson as well as in the previous lessons. So for this one, you need to construct a vertical bar chart and answer the two questions which follow. For the second question now, you need to construct a horizontal bar chart and the scale has been given when you have two questions to answer. Question number three. So in this question, you will have to construct a pictogram and a bar chart. And then you need to answer the following questions. More or less the same type of questions that we have come across during the explanation. Question number four. So you've got your frequency table. You need to construct a pictogram using an appropriate key as well as a bar chart. So here you can decide whether you want to use a horizontal bar chart or a vertical bar chart. And you've got two questions to answer. So in today's lesson, we have learned how to draw a bar chart. Now, remember when you're drawing a bar chart, you need to include the title of the chart you need to label the axes, to use a suitable scale, to draw bars of equal width, to leave equal spaces in between bars. Remember the length of each bar, in fact, represents its respective frequency. So you have learned how to draw a bar chart, how to interpret, or use a bar chart to answer the different questions. Here are some links that you can use for additional practice. So friends, we have reached the end of today's lesson on statistics. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. So until next time, it's goodbye.